Let's see what's on TV. Immigration is leading to lower wages and longer hours. We work six days a week. 60 to 70 hours. Things have gone dark. We only make $500 a year. And seamstresses like myself only make 200 a year. No insurance, no pension. There's not even minimum wage. What will laborers do? Have you had trouble figuring out which union to join? Uh-huh. Well, I have the solution for you. Let me introduce you to the Farmers Alliance. End the adverse effects of the Cropsley end system on farmers. Cheap hail insurance, low prices on machinery. No, you scoundrel! In the Knights of Labor, we know what must bridge the boundaries between race, gender, ethnicity, ideology, and occupation. Universal Brotherhood! Now that's a bunch of hosh posh. Join the National Grange with our own insurance and banks. Together, we can count on the power of corporate middlemen and corporation and mutual aid. No, join the Greenback Labor Party. Greater regulation of corporations and eight hour work days. We've got you all beat. We are an association of numerous local unions founded in 1866, and we call for many large reforms with 700,000 members. We will get what we want and what we deserve. We are the National Labor Union. Breaking news, economic depression has forced the Pullman Palace Car Company to cut its wages of its workers drastically, which has led to a nationwide railroad strike in the United States this day on May 11, 1894. Our news team is currently on the scene. On to you, Barbara. Thanks, still. I'm here live on the scene with many frustrated workers placing their foot down. Sir, what do you have to say about this? This is ludicrous! They cut our wages and don't bother to lower rent in Pullman where most of us live! We tried to speak with Mr. Pullman about our reduced wages, poor living conditions, and increased working hours, but the darn man wouldn't listen. And who has led this strike? That would be me! Wait, are you filming us? Has I even been invented yet? Well, whatever. My name is Eugene V. Debs. And I found the, and I founded the American Railroad Union back in 1893. In fact, I brought some of my organizers into Pullman and even signed up some factory workers to join the cause. Wow, how did Pullman react? Well, I mean, the company refused to recognize the ARU or any of our negotiations. So now we've just been kind of striking against the factory and I'm not sure we're succeeding. Um, but I think my little speech earlier was a good pep talk. Oh, okay, and what did you say earlier during the strike? I said, It's a fact that after working for George M. Pullman for many years, you appear two weeks after your work stops, ragged and hungry. It only emphasizes that the charge I made before this community and Pullman stands before you a self-confessed robber. The paternalism of Pullman is the same as the self-interest of a slaveholder and human chattels. You are striking to avert slavery and degradation. Riveting. All right, back to you, Dill. Oh yeah, they're definitely not going to be successful, but hey, at least they tried. Tune in next time at 11, folks, for more news at 11. I think you love those dirty pigs more than you ever loved me. It's so like that marriage will say no. That's it. We're over. Our relationship is spoiled. Hi, my name's Charles. My relationship might be spoiled, but your meat won't be. Thanks to the creation of refrigerated meat. Guaranteed fresh today. <laughs> He never cared about me. My mother was right. Sob, sob, sob. I made a mistake. He ran to Mary, but it was too late. For Mary has moved on and found another. Charles watches in pain, falls to his knees, and looks at the sky in agony, for his true love has escaped. And now he'll end up with a lonely life, surrounded by fat stacks of cash, till the end of time. Detective, there have been reports 
a suspicious oh amounts God. of money being directed towards shady organizations. Oh my we God. need you at the scene to investigate. Okay. I'll get right on it. Oh. Charles, check this out. You see that right there? Yep. That tastes like corruption juice. Something isn't right here. From my understanding, major stockholders in the Union Pacific Railroad have created a fake company and given contracts to stockholders to create the railroad. And now those suckers sold or gave shares in this construction to congressmen. Not only that, but I bet the construction company charged the railroad far higher rates than usual. Seems like there was a $9 million in discounted stock given as bribes to 15 powerful Washington politicians. Can you believe that? Including the vice president himself. You can tell all that from licking some juice. Not just any juice, Charles. Corruption juice. Detective, I've been doing some sleuthing since I know how much you love your whiskey. And I've discovered a conspiracy. Among government agents, politicians, whiskey distillers, no. and distributors, including diversion on tax revenues. Indeed. It seems distillers bribed government officials, and those officials helped the distillers evade federal taxes on the whiskey they produced and sold. Bloody hell. What is this administration? It's freaking grantism in here. Grantism? Corruption. Scandal. Greed. The juice. Hi. Welcome back to my TV show. Today we'll be discussing the heated issue of a switch to the gold standard with a special guest, John Mosby. Hi. Hi. So, John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a former Virginian Confederate commander, but I've recently begun to agree with our president, Ulysses S. Grant, and am now a Republican. Contrary to most Southerners, I am all for the implementation of the gold standard. Wow, that's so bold of you. Tell us more about your views. I've said this before in a letter, but I'll say it again to this lovely audience. <laughs> you know that I have always been opposed to free coinage of silver. It is simply a new phase of the old greenback lunacy. If you had one barrel of sugar and were to put enough sand in it to fill two barrels, would you have any more sugar? You can't make people richer by debasing the currency. Extremely well put. Couldn't have said it better myself. If I try. Or if I agreed with this ludicrous plan that will only make the rich richer by making their money worth more. But it makes sense, doesn't it? Back up the currency in use with gold so that money actually means something? Um, I don't know, John. I think this will only lead to depression. Or, you know, financial stability. Well, all right, that's enough. Thank you for coming here today. Um, tune in next episode, and we'll be discussing the top 10 scandals of the early 1900s. Scandals. Come one, come all, to the epic showdown between Samuel J. Tilden and Rutherford B. Hayes. Who will be the next president? Nah, I sure hope it be Tilden. Not only does he have the popular vote, but also 184 electoral votes. Um, compared to Hayes, 165. Wait, hold your horses. There's still 20 votes left uncounted. Oh, but we'll get the results soon enough, right? Actually, ma'am, they're still in dispute. Three states, Florida, Louisiana, and South Carolina, reported its own party's candidate winning the states. And I heard that Oregon, some elector, was declared illegal and replaced. Oh no, you mean the 20 votes given to, might be given to Hayes or something? Therefore, giving him the leading by one point and ultimately winning the presidency? Corruption juice, what kind of detective? Mary? Charles? I do. The 
the Populist Party, also known as the People's Party, has risen up as a result of years of suffering among farmers of the South and West. The Populists support policies to relieve hardships on laborers and are having an impact on today's politics. Following a fantastic year gaining popularity, the Populist Party has decided to take their fight against the monopolies in the election of 1892. And here's your candidate, James Weaver. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be your candidate. What are the conditions of today's world has brought you here today? The conditions which surround us be best justify our corporation. We meet in the midst of a nation brought to the verge of moral, political, and material ruin. Corruption dominates the ballot boxes, the legislators, the Congress, and touches even the ermine of the bench. The urban workmen are de denied the right to organize for self-protection. Imported, pauperized labor beats down their wages, and they are rapidly degrading into European conditions. Epic rap battles of history, William McKinley versus the populace, begin! We represent the people, the best for all, and we responded when we were called anti-bank, anti-trust, and if you agree, you're one of us. A new future for all, not this unruly present. Right now you're all kings, and we're just peasants. The best? Hi, oh, not even a threat. Not for me, the Civil War vet. I crushed the South, and don't you fret. I'll crush Brian too without breaking a sweat. We want railroads controlled by the government. Because our high prices are a punishment. Direct election of senators, the people will choose. Done with this corporate-run society, we're no longer amused. And graduated income tax. The laws right now are much too lax. Free coinage to silver, increased money supply. The predictions of mining do not lie. Business is the industry we must fight for, along with that standard you see as a bore. I'm the champion of the gold standard you see, also with protective tariffs for men like these. Rockefeller Gould, brick and melon, making bank by hard work and selling. Tariffs are always giving a bad rep, but it's time for McKinley to give them some pep. It's not gonna raise revenue, so quit your complaints. I'm giving a price advantage over foreign states. I represent a generation of money and brute. You represent the people who dust off my boots. I represent the farmers, the laboring system. Just because they're poor, don't dismiss them. They're ruined by your huge drop in prices, and it's all your fault and all your vices. You raised everything to a horrendous amount, and all the benefits is your bank account. Tariffs raised to 48%. Well, we, the people, don't give our consent. Overproduction and underpaid. You attack with Pinkertons, but we won't be swayed. Our labor unions, you try to shut down, but with our ambition, we'll burn you down. Republican is what I'm proud to be. Demopops are lazy and carefree. Maybe shut up and listen to your bosses. You might make some money, but I'll still cut my losses like you. So arrogant with your cross of gold. We've all heard that speech, some might say bold. I'd say dumb, stupid, and ignorant, but then again, you've never seemed different. This generation you say of superior high class, you pretend to be honest, that facade is like glass. You're all just puppets dancing on strings, P.T. Barnum's cats jumping through rings. We no trusts rule all, you pretend to be important but they make the calls. Don't crucify man on a cross of gold, your capitalist system is getting old. Our populist vote goes to William Bryan, he's honest unlike you, always lying. He's called the great commoner for his faith and wisdom, we believe in silver, shut down the gold system. Gold's ruined our lives, our futures and yours, we run it all, your markets and stores, you tear down your cities you will rebuild but tear down us and all will be killed look at us with that depression of 1893 hobos homeless and trams they all seem depressed to me this country is about to explode with all its strife so many revolts and strikes what is this like we need order plan and precision not some nebraskan farmer to make the decisions Brian's the youngest nominated at 32. Now at that age, what the heck you do? Yeah, you were president, what a bore. And wait, at what age? 54? He ran for president three whole times. And he's the better of the Williams, he got the better rhymes. James Weaver didn't win, but we have high hopes. And when Brian wins, I'm sure you can cope. Your votes will be gone and you will be jilted. You want to be golden, but you're just gilded. Imagine oh. a country run by extremists and hicks. Don't we want a president who understands politics? Sorry for that comment and stooping so low, but that's what happens when a man and child come to Wall Street, stocks, free enterprise, less In other words, I'm rich, filthy rich, like using money to blow my nose rich. I've got the works. Corporations are combining to form trusts, creating monopolies, and hell, I could even influence the government. Money equals power in this age, and I'm dripping it. How do you ask? Horizontal integration. Like Rockefeller, I beat down my competitors like a and force them to join me. 
vertical integration. I, as a single company like Carnegie, own and control the entire process from raw materials to the manufacture and sale of the finished product. Some people call it monopoly, I call it winning. And that's all folks. Thank the Lord and Savior we're finally done with that. Let me in! <laughs>